Just do your job, stop acting like you're important. This is a long one. I've tried to restrain my verbose tendencies as best I could. But it's still a lot. Sorry. As such the story may seem a bit truncated in places. That's me trying to keep the word count down. I've kept details vague deliberately since I generally don't like giving identifying information. Background. Some years back at the start of my career I worked in insurance. My team was new and our boss. Let's call her Alice. Was very ambitious. She'd started off as a team lead managing a similar team to ours and through spending most of her time networking, bootlicking and making herself the center of important high visibility projects she'd managed to score a promotion to manager and was given our team along with her old one. This was very unusual, since she should have gotten two team lead positions to run said teams. But that's how it had worked out. She had already been disinclined to pay much attention to the actual work even before her promotion. After we basically barely ever saw her, her ambitions hadn't stopped at her current achievements. So she was always busy trying to keep climbing the corporate ladder. So that the teams could actually run. She picked the two most ambitious people from each team and made them do her job with no promotion. Or pay increase. I was that person from my team. For about a year I trained my colleagues. Handled payment authorizations through a roundabout way to circumvent company policy. Which said I absolutely wasn't allowed to do that. Handled disputes within the team. Checked over and corrected other people's work. Etc. Our company had a policy that once a year we had a skip level one tune with our boss's boss. At that meeting I brought up how unnatural our situation was. The senior manager replied that she hadn't known myself and the person from the other team were doing so much and agreed that the structure should be reverted to how it's supposed to be, indeed. A couple of weeks later internal postings for the two team lead positions get posted on the company intranet. Fast forward a month or so. And Alice has gathered the teams to make an announcement. The person who had been doing the team lead job from the other team was being made into one. Officially. In our team? A girl we'll call Jane was getting it. Now I wasn't the only one flabbergasted. Both teams were extremely confused and several people even voiced that confusion. I didn't know this at the time and only became aware during my eventual exit interview. But Alice had not liked that I'd gone over her head. Even if she'd benefited from it ultimately. So. In retaliation she'd given the actual position I'd been doing up until that point to someone else. In a one-tune meeting with her later when I brought the subject up. She got angry and said, just do your job. Stop acting like you're important. Quote dot. The malicious compliance. Remember how I said Alice was too busy to ever do her actual job? She paid attention to none of it, including individual team performance. Jane had only been picked because she'd been part of Alice's old team originally and was perceived as loyal to Alice. We'd needed someone to do the really boring data entry parts of the job which nobody else wanted to do, and the other team had recommended her. I guess we should have been suspicious at that point as to why they were so eager. But Alice had approved it. As it turned out, they'd wanted rid of her. Because Jane was stupid. I'm not using that as an insult but as a descriptor. She was genuinely very unintelligent and struggled with anything beyond very basic data entry tasks. When she was made to do anything harder, she'd generally make a complete mess of it. And now she had to actually run an entire team, train people, approve payments, check others people's work and so on. All while she herself struggled with anything more complicated than transferring numbers from one system into another. I honestly don't believe Alice was aware of how big of a blunder she'd made here. She just picked someone she thought of as loyal. Of course. Jane tried to have me basically babysit every action she took. But I was having none of it. I was going to do my own job. And nothing else. 
since I wasn't important. For context for our US friends, we all had contracts with detailed job descriptions and in my country you can't just fire people for no reason, and refusal to do work that's not in the job description is certainly not considered proper cause. I was just a regular employee. None of the management functions I'd been performing up till then were my actual job. The fallout. The team crashed hard over the next three of months. Complaints went from less than five a month to over 20 on average. A lot of incorrect payments were doing out. A huge backlog of cases were piling up. Nobody else on the team wanted to help Jane because they knew they'd just end up having to do her job for her for no benefit. The funniest thing was, Alice barely had an inkling there was a problem. Beyond me being incooperative, which she was pretty vindictive about, because she was busy advancing her career and Jane didn't want to admit how hopelessly out of her depth she was. Things came to a head when the quarterly reports caused alarm bells to ring amongst the leadership team. An internal audit was organized and a lot of the mistakes that had gone through and a whole bunch of leakage were uncovered. Alice had to go explain herself as to why our performance was suddenly so terrible. At this point she'd finally realized she should have paid more attention to the situation. But unbeknownst to even her, it was too late. Everything from here on is hearsay. I learned it from a friend who was a team lead of a completely different team. So take it with a grain of salt. Apparently there had been talks about outsourcing teams to India. However Alice's boss, the one who opened the team lead positions, had been staunchly against it, since it would diminish her fiefdom. The proponents of the outsourcing managed to use our team's horrible quarterly results to justify using the two teams under Alice as a pilot for the outsourcing program. Quite literally the next day after I'd accepted a position in a different company and was planning on giving notice, we were gathered and informed our teams would be shuttered in four months and that we'd be training our replacements in India during that period. I heard from colleagues who stayed till the end that Alice was not offered another position after her teams were made redundant. Not surprising really. Open manager positions and new teams didn't exactly grow on trees. Sadly the pilot was considered a success. Which honestly I personally find somewhat dubious. But the Indian center was certainly a lot cheaper than us. And I learned via LinkedIn about a year and a half later that the entire department had been shuttered. So realistically. The whole thing was probably inevitable. But at the very least Alice could have bought herself an extra year if she'd cared a bit more. It amazes me that I keep hearing this time and time again. All Alice had to do was keep her underpaid employee happy and she could have coasted on your work. To another promotion. But instead she decided to be petty and ended up being made redundant. Which she clearly was from the start. Great story. Unfortunately I heard, lived lot of stories that management gives promises. Do extra work with no pay. It will pay off later. And when later comes there is always an excuse why nothing happened. Some had happy endings. Some not. And I am glad your story turned this way for main bad guy. Fiefdom is the word of the day. Did you get the redundancy or did you leave a little too soon? I love it how management thinks that employees under them are supposed to train their replacement. Nope. That's management's job. Not in the job description of employees. Usually. Friend worked at a bank's IT department. That department got sourced out and friend let go. Turned out my friend knew the legacy software and the new folks didn't. They wanted him back on a short-term contract. He wanted six months, maybe three, due to his losing unemployment medical benefits. He's have to cover that under the new contract which reduced his actual pay enough to make it not worth the effort. 
bank instead hired macro hard for much more money and a longer time frame sounds to me like failure was only inevitable because of that stunt alice poll odds are if somebody proper had been given the position things would chug along smoothie to this day but the indian center was certainly a lot cheaper than us and i learned via linkedin about a year and a half later that the entire department had been shuttered i used to work at a call center that had outsourced large swaths of its labor force a StarTech run facility out of the philippines and a teleperformance run facility out of egypt the outsourced centers were allowed to do their own qa and their qa was always perfect management would use the outsourced qa scores to make threats to the local staff for some reason the local center had the highest customer satisfaction scores on surveys and the outsourced call centers typically had horrible customer satisfaction scores but they were better because their qa was higher face with rolling eyes alice in blunderland I suppose this is compliant, but it seems to fit more in the anti-work sub instead. I used ChatGPT to do a TLDR in the early stages of the posters. Op. Career in insurance. Their ambitious boss. Alice. Unfairly assigned extra responsibilities without promotion or pay increase. When the op raised concerns in a skip level meeting, the structure was corrected. But Alice retaliated by giving the OP's position to someone else. The replacement, Jane, was ill-suited for the role, leading to a team performance crash, numerous complaints, and a backlog of cases. Subsequently, the team became a pilot for outsourcing, resulting in the closure of the entire department and no new position for Alice. If you enjoyed this video, Please check out our playlists full of similar content. EpicaraCast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.